Hello friends, bonjour, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another wardrobe updates that I have been putting off making for a while just because I really have so many things to talk about and a few of these things are not super nice. I'm dreading that a little bit, but I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna go straight into the biggest news first and that is also arguably the most devastating one and it is about my pink slip dress the silk one from Etsy. I was at a party wearing this dress and it was a summer party so towards late throughout the night people started uh, going into the lake to have a swim myself included and when I got back out my dress was gone like it's literally been stolen and I can still buy it again from the Etsy store but there is something just really frustrating about having to buy something that you already owned and in the case of this dress this is really expensive and it was also tailor-made at least the length was and I bought it for $218 at the time which is not a small amount and I worn it nine days in total. The total cost wear is $24.22 and I could have worn this dress for like literally years and years. I was so happy with it. So knowing that this taps out at like $24 is really upsetting and I mean that's just the monetary loss because the other thing is of course that I did absolutely love the dress and since having lost it a couple of months ago I have sort of also really needed it like there are a few times where i would reach for the pink dress i went to a wedding in copenhagen for instance and i actually ended up going or buying another dress this hot pink viscose dress from esmer duty because i needed something here and now like i literally just didn't have anything else that I wanted to wear. It's not a big deal. I do really love the new hot pink dress, so I am going to obviously uh, keep that. Now I've also worn it a couple of times, but I sort of didn't buy the pink dress immediately because, or the baby pink dress, because I wanted to see if I would move on without it and then find something else because there are times where I have also like had something ruined or lost something one of those things was last cold season I lost my black cashmere sweater in this case the cost wear was pretty low so at least there's that but still it was like a, a black cashmere sweater I could have used that for years and years to come so when stuff like that happens it's really annoying but I didn't replace the black cashmere sweater because I have some other cashmere sweaters and I do have have some black fitted tops like a fitted top like a regular crew neck and then also some turtleneck so I felt like I could do without it in my wardrobe until something shows up or maybe later down the road but with this pink dress I honestly just really want to buy it again the only silver lining to it and it's not even really a silver lining is that I didn't really particularly love the bag of the dress like I feel like it can be a little bit underwear like when you wear a dress like this with this bag I would prefer to have it with a different bag. I do prefer or do like the v-neck for the pink dress so I'm I would like to reorder the dress in like the v-neck. The same measurements maybe five centimeters or a couple of inches longer and then actually with the bag from the cowl neck dress they usually make and then I'm considering also making uh, having that made in black because I've considered getting a black one for a while as well. It's really frustrating that's also why I haven't pulled the trigger yet to have to buy something that you basically already had but I, I really think that I might because I honestly I think about the dress like multiple times a week it's really a shame it had really become like a, a cornerstone within my wardrobe for summer like something that I would always reach for it so that is super upsetting just want to share that's also one of the reasons for instance I like to count my cost per wear because normally with a piece like this you know I would have continued to wear it and slowly the cost per wear would have gone down but here we are going to tap out at $24 and that's just it's such a shame but I, I have come like a really really long way from my fast fashion days when I say fast fashion I mean basically you know before I was really like revamping and rebuilding my wardrobe I remember back then right at the beginning I already have some fast fashion pieces and a lot of these pieces some of them I only wore like once or twice there was this yellow top for instance that like my cost wear for that was also like $20 and then you know I have other things where it's for like $10 or something a little bit more than that where either like the piece deteriorates pretty quickly and you have to buy something new all the time or 
I just, I lost interest in the piece. So that doesn't really happen anymore. Of course, there still are some mistake purchases, but at least it's at the point now where all of my pieces, they really do sort of like rapidly or slowly go down in their cost per wear. But then when things tap out, it's because something like this happens, like either something breaks or something gets lost. And we're actually moving straight into another lost piece. This is also super unfortunate. I actually lost my pearl drop necklace, the one that you guys have seen me wear a lot. I still get questions on it as well. And this is also something that I can rebuy. But this again is also something that's almost like $200. And what really bothers me about this is that this was definitely sort of like my own mistake because I wore it out dancing. And I haven't really thought about the fact that the that the, like the lock or like the closing whatever part on the necklace, it was sort of like a small hook. It's not something that actually closes. So. I usually wouldn't wear the necklace to go out dancing, stuff like that, but I just really hadn't thought about it and I wore it and then I've at some point I've just like danced it off. So that was super unfortunate and also something to learn from like, cause I knew having had the necklace through for a while that it would be possible to drop it if I wasn't careful. And I still kept postponing having like a real clasp or whatever you call it put on it. So annoying, it's sort of, one thing that I realized now losing these two things and then last season losing the black cashmere sweater. The thing is like when you start building your wardrobe of considerably better pieces, whenever you lose something, there's also a great chance that like what you lose is something of great value. So you need to take overall better care of your stuff. And it's funny because it's already something I do take into consideration. For example, with my Jill Sander blazer, which that one, you know, first of all, it's so expensive from new. Then I got it a great price of its second hand. It is a cornerstone within my wardrobe and I really doubt I would ever be able to find it again if I lost it. So this is a piece actually that when I wear this, because I do wear it for basically everything, but I will never ever leave it unattended. Like generally I don't take it off and when and if I do, I literally like keep it, keep it on me. I don't, um, or if I lay it somewhere, it's because I have friends still sitting there. I do take these things into consideration, but it's just, it, it, I mean, we wear so much clothes every day that uh, there's bound for something to happen to some of it and not my brightest or luckiest moments. Then into something a little bit better or nicer to talk about and it is a new proof of concept. I have some proof of concepts that I really like to stick to now and then I like to build my wardrobe for these because I can really build a quality wardrobe from the things that I already know that I love to wear. So. It's really nice when I get to come up with another proof of concept and for the summer I actually came up with two. One of them is the white shirt dress that you've probably already seen me in. Like a white shirt dress and then with like a belt to cinch in at the waist. It's just been like one of my most worn things this uh, season and it's definitely something I'm going to take with me for the next hot season and I'm just I'm really happy to have found that proof of concept and I did mention in like my last summer capture water video that it does make a lot of sense because it's sort of like a lot of the things that I like in one outfit, like a since thin waist, a collared shirt, and then also obviously long sleeved, and then this A-line shape. So I ended up, not that this is going to turn into like a what's new in my wardrobe video, but I did end up with one from Uniqlo at the end of it because I started with one from H&M or I still have the both of them, but the Uniqlo one is definitely a more dressy one. I'll also link it in the description here. Then I want to talk about my nude stripy heels from another stories. Obviously when I started talking about them, they were very new in my wardrobe, super comfortable, really stick to my feet. I never had to break them in. They never actually gave me any blisters or anything like that, but I also really wore them so much and for long nights, dancing all night and because it is a suede they got quite dirty quite quickly and of course you know I will continue to clean that but yeah it's not easy to clean suede especially not a new color like that and then aside from that again because of I guess the suede and the fact that there's no angle strap they have stretched out quite a bit so now I actually slide down into the shoe so far that like my toes are no longer on the shoe like they're in front of the shoe so that is really not super nice and I actually haven't worn them since because I know in order to wear them 
like as comfortably as before I do need to take them to a cobbler and that's not a big deal but living here in Switzerland everything is just so expensive I do take all of my clothes or I do take my clothes to the tailor here and stuff like that I've also had some things done by a cobbler but you actually have to put a lot of money like a lot of the time like half of what the shoe has originally cost I haven't done that yet but I'm also not going to declutter the shoes as I might do something about it further down the road it's a shame but that's one of the things with like everything you can buy and I think in my case especially for footwear like with footwear it's really hard to know if something will stay like your favorite pair of shoes or like will stay comfortable until you wore them like a fair amount and that is something that happened here then shortly after that you might have also seen this i did air another pair of nude heels also from another story so these instead are leather so like a more um, glossy leather and then they do have an angle strap and these are also extremely comfortable actually i think even maybe even a little bit more comfortable the strap on top of the foot i do feel it a little bit but i do wear them for hours and they don't blister me they don't bother me that much and then of course also the ankle strap even though it does cut off the leg a little bit it does really just hold the shoe in or the heel in place way better so you don't right really like slide into the front of the shoe and then like ex expand it that's not the word but you know what I mean these are I'm so happy with and these I'm just gonna continue to wear until they are no longer wearable which I hope they will be for a, a very long time so if you didn't pull the trigger on the other ones or if you have and you have had the same experience as me I do recommend the other ones the other ones I started you know when people bought those from my recommendation I was very transparent about the fact that they were new at the time where these ones the other ones they are no longer new like I've worn them eight days so far but when I say eight days it's not like eight days where I like stand around look pretty it's like eight days where like I go out in these and I have like a have like a proper dance and then another proof of concept i also wanted to, to chat about is shorts i have for the entire time of my youtube channel talked about how little i like shorts or how little i feel like they look good on me because i do really like shorts on their own it's just whenever i wear them i just don't think that it looks good and i have tried so many shorts throughout my time but that has changed this season and shorts have now joined my list of proof of concepts the pink linen shorts I brought a couple of seasons ago I haven't actually worn them but now I think they look good on me and then I also have like the denim shorts and then I have a pair of linen shorts all from this season and all from H&M except um, from the first pair of linen shorts I do consider the shorts I've added kind of casual but that's not really what I wanted to get into but I do think that they look really good now I, re I re feel really comfortable in them and it definitely comes down to changes in my body I'm just a couple of weeks short of having done a weightlifting for an entire year so usually three four times a week I go to the gym and like I lift weights like a proper weightlifting routine and my body has really changed its shape clothes just sits a little bit differently and one of the things that has changed with the weightlifting is that usually I tend to carry a lot of weights in my hips but I don't carry quite that as much in my bum so it tends to like have like sort of like a very squared look that I don't necessarily like the look of in a lot of clothes and shorts is one of those things but now that I've been weightlifting that has sort of like rounded out quite a bit like I have definitely lost some fat around my hips and then it has rounded out around my bum as well so now things just look sort of different and it looks a lot better in shorts from my own perspective so it's interesting to see how some of your proof of concepts does change with how you think your body looks in them so it was never really shorts that I didn't like it was how my body looked in shorts and I could also go the rest of my life never going up getting around to like wearing shorts I have so many other things that I can wear and that I prefer to wear over shorts anyway like skirts but now that things have changed it's just nice that this is another thing that I can wear whenever I want to then there's also another thing that also has something to do with body changes that I wanted to talk about I thought it was just interesting to include it here in the wardrobe update and it is the summer heat for two years you've been hearing me talking about how badly I fare in the heat like in general whenever it gets like really hot actually already 25 degrees ish but then a little bit more than that like 26 7 and up to like 32 degrees I start getting really uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable in like this special sense where like I really just feel yes yeah, so uncomfortable in my skin but 
I have had a much different experience this year. I can stay in the heat much longer. I don't feel as like gross and sticky and I don't feel as uncomfortable in my own body. And outside of the weightlifting, the only change I can really think of that has changed this after years of feeling this way is I stopped taking birth control uh, last year. That's also almost an entire year ago. And there's a lot of things that came with me, for me with quitting birth control that has nothing to do with style. So I'm gonna try not to get into that. But one of them is, for sure, or I'm just assuming that must be the reason that I've, like, I've been feeling this way for almost as long as I can remember when it gets really hot. Uh, but then also Denmark as a teenager didn't really get that hot and I don't remember feeling uncomfortable either. But then as like, you know, the, the climate around the globe is starting to get like warmer, I have also started to get more like uncomfortable in this strange way. And then I, I quit birth control and I just, I don't feel that way anymore. It's really interesting because I have a, I have a friend who's a journalist and she specializes in uh, like the female reproductive system or like that's her, her area of expertise and she writes a lot about like female health like I, I asked her because I actually I googled it and I couldn't find anything online but basically when you are on birth control the ones that have like two different hormones one of them is estrogen and now I don't remember what she said the other one is but what you're telling your body with the pill is that it is the in the early stage of pregnancy which is why you don't ovulate no one tells you that for that duration of time your body is acting as if it's in the early stage of pregnancy and for some people that is gonna come with like a myriad of symptoms that are not very nice and because they come so slowly and manifest so slowly at least for me that you just you don't you don't realize that is anything that it has anything to do with the pill one of the symptoms of, of pregnancy is like heat flashes or like being really uncomfortable in the heat and yeah I'm just strongly assuming that that must be the reason it can't be like the weightlifting on its own that like changes to this degree how my body feels in that sense. I feel differently now and uh, for sure that is gonna help me in the following seasons. It's just such a great relief to not be as insanely uncomfortable in the heat as I used to. Then there is one more thing to talk about. It's not really a wardrobe update, but I still just wanted to mention it really quickly. I did buy the Dyson Airwrap. I'm definitely gonna include it in a video. I'm probably gonna do like a casual video about like getting ready where my beauty routine is at and then include like the Airwrap. And I really feel like the next point in like taking great care of my appearance the way I like to is getting a little bit more serious about my hair. I tend to either do like absolutely nothing to it or I use some like heat tools to it that aren't necessarily super healthy for the for the hair. So I ended up with the air wrap after trying it out a couple of times at a friend's place and really happy with it. Just wanted to mention. And then I was gonna mention something else like what I'm looking for at the moment, but I'm gonna create a separate video about that, especially now going into fall. Now comes like the really and really interesting part of starting to wear like my fall clothing. I think we're a few weeks short of really being there, but I'm really exciting for that to happen. And also because I need li less experimenting in the cold seasons than I did with the summer season. I think my content is definitely going to reflect that and there's gonna be a lot more reflecting upon and thinking ahead of what I want to add. So I'm really excited to do some videos about that and I hope that you enjoyed the video as well. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.